Bismillah, alhamdulillah, salatu wassalamu alaikum. What is the English translation of the Quran? The clear Quran or? Inshallah, <coughs> we'll continue with the tafsir class. Is it right here? No. Um, the next verse is verse number 30. وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةً قالوا أتجعل فيها من يفسد فيها ويسفك الدماء ونحن نسبح بحمدك ونقدس لك قال إني أعلم ما لا تعلمون. So the translation of this verse from the clear Quran is as follows. بسم الله. We need to get a separator. Um, <coughs> the pages are very thin. <clears throat> he puts this under the title of honoring Adam. As you know, in the clear Quran, he puts titles for every few verses that he feels have a common concept or common subject. Honoring Adam. He says, remember when your Lord said to the angels, I am going to place a successive human authority on earth. They asked, will you place in it someone who will spread corruption there and shed blood while we glorify your praises and proclaim your holiness. God responded, I know what you do not know. I Follow have a question there. Yes. How did the angels knew that human will spread corruption? Since God has not actually revealed to them. Yes, well, that's what we'll be discussing, inshallah. Uh, but the following verse, number 31. He taught Adam the names وعلم آدم الأسماء كلها ثم عرضهم على الملائكة فقال أنبئوني بأسماء هؤلاء إن كنتم صادقين Translation He taught Adam the names of all things Then he presented them to the angels and said Tell me the names of these If, you, if what you say is true They replied Glory be to you We have no knowledge except what you have taught us قالوا سبحانك لا علم لنا إلا ما علمتنا you are truly the all-knowing, the all-wise. The following verse, number 33. God said, O Adam, and inform them of their names. God said, O Adam, inform them of their names. Then when Adam فلما أنبأهم بأسمائهم فلما نبأهم بأسمائهم قال ألم أقول لكم Then when Adam did God said Did I not tell you that I know the secrets of the heavens and the earth and I know what you reveal and what you conceal So this, these verses talk about one subject um, Yeah we'll get to how they knew so the word Khalifa, in Nijalun fil Ardi Khalifa, comes from Khalifa, means to succeed. Uh, khalifa could mean Khalif, means uh, Adam and his descendants succeed a previous creation, or could mean Makhluf, means that they are succeeded, they are succeeded, which means each one, like the generation of Adam is succeeded by the following generation, succeeded by the following generation. Yani yakhlufu ba'duhum ba'da. So they succeed each other. And they came as a successor to a previous creation. Previous creation. Uh, many of the previous, uh, many of the Sahaba Tabi'een say that um, the jinn uh, were created before Adam and they uh, had the upper authority uh, uh, on earth. The earth was subjected to them. So they had the authority on earth just like human beings have the authority on earth today. Uh, and Allah says that he created jinn before, before, um, before uh, the creation of the human beings. وَلَقَدْ خَلَقْنَا الْإِنسَانَ مِنْ صَلْصَالٍ مِنْ حَمَئٍ مَسْنُونَ وَالْجَانَّ خَلَقْنَاهُ مِنْ قَبْلُ مِنْ نَارِ السَّمُومِ I created the jinn before I created Adam. مِنْ قَبْلُ مِنْ نَارِ السَّمُومِ From fire. So some scholars say that the jinn who have characteristics, intention and free will, just like we do, they lived on earth and they uh, uh, basically behaved in the same manner that human beings behaved. So
So some scholars say that the angels uh, felt, uh, they knew that there was a resemblance between the two creations in quality. So they, this is how they knew that the people will do the same thing the jinn did. Or it could be that Allah revealed to the jinn, to the um, angels, the qualities of Adam and what he will be doing and how he will behave. The Quran doesn't have to tell you everything, but you know it from the following, from the following verse. So because they asked him, Will you create therein who spreads corruption and sheds blood? This indicates that they were told this, and that's why they're asking this question. You follow? And the Quran is very concise. It, it, uh, it doesn't have to tell you that Allah told them, I will create Adam and he will do this and this and this. And then the question is repeated again. So why will you allow him to do this and this and this? Okay? That's to be, to be concise. <clears throat> Or Khalifa could also mean a deputy of Allah on earth that human beings are responsible to establish the law of Allah, the Sharia of Allah, the deen of Allah on earth. And Allah does what he does in the lives of human beings through the actions of human being. Allah, there are certain things that he loves to be established, including his religion, his laws, the good things, and to abolish the evil. But Allah does not miraculously do that. Right? There's lots of mischief on earth, lots of corruption, lots of uh, tyranny and so many bad and evil things. And Allah does not like this. But Allah has put human beings as the te- deputy and taught them and told them how to deal with all these things and how to um, uh, eradicate evil and how to spread goodness. So this, this is, uh, the, 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 this is the, the job of the human being as a khalifa to life al-ard, as a khalifa, as a deputy and the vice gerent of Allah on earth. This verse shows that Allah <coughs> with qala rabbuka that Allah speaks. Qala rabbuka means he said. And if Allah said that he said, then Allah speaks. Um, and it, this verse also indicates the presence of the angels as well, which who are mentioned here uh, for the first time in the Quran. This shows that Allah created a certain creation that is made out of light who are the angels and they have certain qualities that they only obey Allah, they have no capability of disobeying Allah. They consume their time in praying to Allah, glorifying Him, glorifying Him and praising, praising Him. Um, while the human being has the ability to obey or disobey based on this, on this verse. Uh, Ibn Abbas says, uh, has a saying, he says, uh, anywhere in the Quran you see nusabbih or yusabbih, it, it refers to salah, refers to prayer, refers to prayer. Uh, because nusabbih means tanzihu Allah ala wajhi to um, to distance Allah from anything, from any evil notion, from any deficiency, from any defect, from any weakness, from any evil, to indicate that Allah is free of all these things. And that he's the exact opposite. And this is the meaning of that we distance you from anything that does not befit your majesty and we affirm your praises. Hamd means um, to praise Allah and this praise is associated with glorification of Allah, reverence and love. This is the meaning of alhamd. When you say alhamdulillah, it means I praise Allah, I affirm all his beautiful uh, qualities and attributes with all love and with reverence to Allah Azza wa and humility from us towards Allah Azza wa And نُقَدِّسُ لَكْ Tasbih and Taqdis are very close to each other, uh, are very close because Taqdis means also تَبْرِئَةُ اللَّهِ مِنَ النَّقَائِسِ Taqdis, Tathir, Taqdis means purification. So you, pure, uh, you declare the purity of Allah and that he is free from any deficiency. So some scholars like Tahir ibn Ashur, he says here that there's no repetition. He says, نُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِكْ بِالْفِعْلِ وَنُقَدِّسُ لَكَ بِالْقَوْلِ That, this, and this actually goes with the saying of Ibn Abbas, because he says, نُسَبِّحُ بِحَمْدِكْ is to, to do the salah, to pray to Allah. وَنُقَدِّسُ لَكَ means to Praise him verbally, praise him verbally. So the first one is physical and practical praise, and the second one is verbal and, 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 and to, to praise him in belief and in, uh, in saying. You follow? 
سبحان الله وبحمده it is mentioned in the hadith فإنها صلاة كل شيء authentic hadith فإنها صلاة كل شيء وبها يرزق الخلق إنها صلاة Messenger of Allah says this is the salah this is the prayer of all Allah's creation تسبيح بالحمد and وهي وبها يرزق كل شيء and because of it Allah sends down his provision to his creation because of the tasbih Allah sends down the, uh, uh, his provision you see that when Sayyidina Yunus was swallowed by Jonah when he was swallowed by the whale Allah said about him فَلَوْلَا أَنَّهُ كَانَ مِنَ الْمُسَبِّحِينَ if he were not from the people who did tasbih لَلَّبِثَ فِي بَطْنِهِ إِلَى يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ He would have not been saved from the, from the belly of the, of the whale. So this indicates the importance of tasbih. قَالَ إِنِّي أَعْلَمُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Which means that Allah said to them that you, they do not comprehend the full wisdom behind why Allah created, why Allah created Adam. And this shows if the angels cannot comprehend the full wisdom of Allah, then human beings should not seek to know or think that they may know uh, uh, the wisdom of Allah behind what he does. We know, may know certain things, whatever you do not know, you, sub you submit uh, to what you know. You know that Allah is wise and he couldn't have created all this magnificent creation with all its complexity and enormity without being wise. You, you can see that in, in, in the creation of Allah, actually in the creation of one organ, just take the eye and how everything is placed in the proper position uh, at, the mac in, at the macroscopic level and the microscopic level. The, the deeper you go into the cell and the channels and the pumps and, and molecules, you realize more and more and more that everything is just in a very appropriate place. If one thing was missing from its place, all, uh, it all would all collapse and nothing would work. So we know that he is wise from what we know. For, for, uh, so when we, come, when, it comes to, when we come across something we do not understand the wisdom behind or the cause behind, we refer to the, uh, we say, قَالَ إِنِّي أَعْلَمُ مَا لَا تَعْلَمُونَ Allah says in another verse, وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ say, Saying to us, and Allah knows and you do not, you do not know. Um, Allah says, وَعَسَى أَن تُحِبُّ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ وَعَسَى أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ شَرٌ لَكُمْ وَعَسَى أَن تَكْرَهُ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ وَعَسَى أَن تُحِبُّ شَيْئًا وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ وَأَنْتُمْ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ وَأَنْتُمْ لَا وَأَنْتُمْ لَا تَعْلَمُونَ And and this is the thing. يعني um, uh, when when uh, when the angels asked about the wisdom uh, why Allah would create Adam with such qualities and some of those qualities are apparent evil, but they did not realize the greater good that comes from the creation of Adam because uh, there will be righteous people, there will be prophets, there will be a struggle between good and evil that Allah loves to see and Allah loves to reward people for their, for their efforts in drawing near to him and in obeying him willingly despite all the odds. So, and, uh, so all these things are more beloved to Allah Azza wa Jal uh, and Allah will um, um, reward such people uh, with uh, the highest reward in paradise. All these things are beloved to Allah, bestow His mercy upon such people. And also Allah uh, has uh, attributes of um, uh, be, like being the king. He has attributes where He would punish people who will go against His commandments, who violate His laws. And all these things will only show if people had this ability to obey and disobey. Otherwise, these attributes of Allah will not take effect. And we know that uh, the attributes of Allah will definitely and have, they have to take effect. It's inevitable. There's no way around it. So <clears throat> that is why um, even when uh, uh, Al-Khadr, when, even when Musa um, uh, had, يعني, was asked one time um, uh, by his people, who is the most knowledgeable? He said, I, I am the most knowledgeable because he is the prophet of that nation. Then Allah humbled him as well by sending him to somebody is, who is more knowledgeable. The same thing happened here, that when the angels felt that the, uh, they, they were asking about the wisdom, and they might have felt that they are more worthy of uh, being the Khalifa on earth than the human being. So Allah also showed them that Adam is actually more, uh, more knowledgeable than they are. Uh, based on the verses, uh, verses to come. Let's see what the Imam al-Mawardi says about the, the first verse. 
وإذ قال ربك للملائكة إني جاءهم في الأرض خليفة في قوله وإذ وجهان وإذ the word إذ means remember أنه صلة زائدة وتقدير الكلام وقال ربك للملائكة وهذا قول أبي عبيدة والوجه الثاني إذ كلمة مقصورة ليست بصلة زائدة وفيها لأهل التأويل قولان أحدهما إن الله تعالى لما ذكر خلقه لما ذكر خلقه نعم نعمه عليهم بما خلقه لهم في الأرض ذكرهم بنعمه على أبيهم نعم آه والثاني أن الله عز وجل ذكر ذكر ابتداء الخلق فكأنه قال وابتدأ خلقكم yes basically إذ means remember and uh, he's trying to make a connection between this verse and the verse prior because the verse prior talks about the beginning of creation of the heavens and earth هو الذي خلق لكم ما في الأرض جميعا ثم استوى إلى السماء فسوى هنا سبع سماوات after Allah talked about the beginning of the creation of universe he talked about the beginning of the creation of the most important creation in this universe who is man right mankind so after talking about the beginning of creation of the universe immediately he talked about the beginning of creation of um, uh, human beings amma malaika fa jam'u malakin wa huma akhudu min ar-risala the word malaika actually means a messenger actually this is what it means in arabic malaika means messenger because they are the messengers of allah between him and uh, his prophets and human beings and they are the, the also the messengers whom allah sends to implement his will in his in his creation like the moon the sun the angels allah uses to uh, to tell them give them commandments do go and do this so they are the messengers of allah so uh, جاعل اختلف في معناها احدهما بمعنى خالق والثاني بمعنى جاعل مين يعني جاعل means I am I will create or I will make this is what it means الارض means earth but some people said it refers here specifically to مكة some scholars feel that the beginning of human existence on earth started started in Mecca and it actually makes sense because Allah says in awwal bayt in wudu' lil nas lalladhi bi Mecca right so Allah put human beings on earth to worship him if Allah says the first place of worship that was established on earth was in Mecca it just makes sense that just makes sense that um, uh, the first place humans inhabited on earth was not Africa <laughs> this is what they say, right? right? Nowadays, it is in Mecca, inshallah, right? And actually, there are some narrations as well that indicate that uh, some hadith, but I, I don't think they are authentic, but narrations that say that the earth was created like, a, like an island uh, around Mecca and then it expanded and expanded. It could be. Uh, I, might, I might get you this narration one day to read it to you. Uh, <laughs> In Sri Lanka, <laughs> this is the first time I hear this one. <laughs> like the, some people said here, uh, but there's no evidence. Like the, you can't, I can't even prove the saying that I'm saying right now, <laughs> that he started in Mecca. There's no proof. You, could, you might conclude, you know, draw, draw conclusions, but the, nobody can prove their saying. وفي خلافة آدم وذريته ثلاثة أقوال. The word Khalifa, successor. أنه كان في الأرض الجن just like we mentioned there was jinn before Adam so he succeeded them الثاني أنه أراد قوما يخلف بعضهم بعضا they succeed each other الثالث أنه أراد جاعل في الأرض خليفة يخلفني في الحكم بين خلقي that the third one is that they, he's a deputy of Allah just like we mentioned the three sayings that he's a deputy of Allah to implement the will of Allah تجعل فيها ما يفسد فيها ويسفك الدماء ونحن نسبح بحمدك ونقدس لك <coughs> أحدها أنهم قالوا استفهاما واستخبارا حين قالوا إني جاءنا في الأرض خليفة قالوا يا ربنا أعلمنا أجعل أنت في الأرض من يفسد فيها they say oh Allah tell us the wisdom so they're not objecting but they're asking about the wisdom you follow and just like you asked here they say they thought maybe he will behave just like the previous creation سفك الدماء actually they mentioned the most evil action of human beings there's lots of evil but they said يفسد فيها but the, يفسد فيها spread corruption okay. killing is also a corruption in, on earth but they, they went they said يفسد فيها and then they singled out killing and shedding blood because it's the worst of corruption it's the worst kind of corruption on earth right 
And that's why it's actually one of the gravest sins. لا يزال المرء في مندوحة من دينه ما لم يصب دما حراما. He says your deen is still safe unless you shed blood. You shed blood, then you're you're in big trouble. يعني some scholars said that even killing has no tawbah. Like uh, there's some scholars like Ibn Abbas says there's no there's no repentance. You cannot repent from killing someone. There's no repentance. But it's a it's a it's not the يعني the preponderant saying in this is that it is accepted as evidenced by the hadith. Of the person who killed 99 people, and he still and he still repented, right? Now, no. <coughs> we're almost done. Let's see what the meaning of tasbih. What tasbih of kalamih mu tanzih min al su'a ala wajh al taqdim. So tanzih ma taqdim. It is to distance Allah from any deficiency while affirming the glory of Allah, you know, the majesty of Allah. <coughs> A tasbih is something specific for Allah. You cannot use it to describe anyone else. Yeah, it's, uh, you cannot say, I, I make tasbih for, for this man or this man. That's totally prohibited. It's only for Allah. Just so, so, certain words can only be for Allah, such as the, uh, the name of Allah, Ar Rahman. You cannot call anybody Ar Rahman. These are specific for Allah. <coughs> you cannot call some, somebody uh, a Samad or something like this, or Ahad, certain, certain names. <laughs> والمراد ونحن نسبح بحمدك أربعة تقاويل. Four sayings about نسبح بحمدك. نصلي لك. Just like we mentioned. It just it talks about the prayer. فلو نا فلو لأنه كان من المسبحين أي من المصلين. Some sayings say that Yunus عليه السلام مسبحين that he used to pray. As I mentioned, ابن هذا هذا قول ابن عباس وابن مسعود. ابن عباس ابن عباس said that every تسبيح in the Quran is صلاة is prayer. You follow? And actually you. This talks about the timings of prayer that we pray. The five timings of prayer are mentioned in this verse. Right? <clears throat> that we glorify you. A thalith tasbih al maruf to say subhanallah. <clears throat> he did he mention a rabbi here? Nuqaddisu lak. He did only say, he said there's four, but he only mentioned three. Nuqaddisu lak. Asu taqdis al tathir. منه الأرض المقدسة أرض المقدسة is which which is أرض المقدسة فلسطين نعم أرض المقدسة الذي باركنا حوله فلسطين نعم نقدس لك ثلاثة أقاويل نقدس لك الصلاة تطهير من الأدناس نقدس لك means to pray to pray to glorify to distance Allah from any impurity also نقدس لك means نقدس لك أنفسنا نطهر لك أنفسنا that we purify ourselves for your sake, because Allah loves, and Allah tayyibun, la yaqbalu illa tayyib. Allah is pure and only loves and accepts what is pure. Nuqaddis ulak means we purify ourselves so that you accept us. You follow? From every evil and every thing that Allah dislikes. Tathirum al and also tathirum al adnas. And we purify, a Muslim is required to, to purify the inside and outside. Wa thiyabaka, wa thiyabaka, fatahir, right? We purify, we go and make wudu, we make ghusl, we, we cannot come to salah with. Najas and so on, right? Call in the Alma Talamun. We'll stop here. We'll stop here, inshallah. We'll continue next time, inshallah.